organization showed that the latest vaccination tests have failed. With the bureaucrats out of power, we can finally take the necessary steps. Part of the effect The Last of Us is going for is of being an individual going through a pandemic. Uh, we don't get these scenes where the doctors are saying, this is a virus, this is a vac bacteria, uh, whatever. It's, it's not interested in that side of it so much. Um, I don't think it does have much of a responsibility to be accurate. Uh, I mean, it's it's science fiction. It's a post-apocalypse if you, you know, when you look at something like, uh, I guess 28 days later might be a good comparison, 28 weeks later. We don't necessarily expect the science there to be accurate. I think what we always expect is um, the veneer of accuracy. Mm. Um, I think where it might be more interesting to look at um, accuracy would be games like uh, Plague Incorporated, uh, where that is uh, that is basically talking about transmission vectors. A lot of the time you get a map of the globe, um, you play the virus, or you can choose to play a bacteria, a fungal spore, uh, a parasite, various other things. Uh, you always want a long incubation period. That's, you know, <laughs> once once you can get out there into the world without scientists realizing you're there, uh, it works very well. And that would be a game where I would look much, much more for accuracy about pandemics than something like The Last of Us. Because in The Last of Us, it is really kind of um, background to the story the game is telling, which is about Joel and Ellie. Uh, whereas in something like Plague Inc., it's more important, I guess, and it kind of makes the game more fun if the parameters you're playing with are, you know, more representative so of the real world. Grounded in realism. Yeah. Mm. So I think the guy who uh, who developed that, I beg his pardon, I forget his name, but I think he went to talk to the uh, the Centre for Disease Control in the, in the US, so I think he was really into the epidemiology mm -hmm. and science behind it. So, but, I mean, do you think that maybe game makers should work more or work closer with scientists to ensure that at least there's a passing uh, passing nod to, to to what would really happen. I mean, in this case, you say in this case, maybe not, but w I even if they just said, oh, this, this, you know, we're going to make this vaccine, it's going to take some time, but, you know, we're going to mm. do it, would, would at least a nod towards realism, do you think that, that would be important? I, uh, well, I, I think even more than a nod. I mean, it very much depends on the type of game you're making again. Mm. You know, if you, if you are making a kind of brainless sci-fi shooter, nobody is really playing that with science. If you're making something, and I think The Last of Us does have ambitions to be a kind of uh, uh, deeper game with deeper themes. I mean, obviously the themes here are more emotional. They're about the father-daughter bond. Um, but they, it is it is a scenario where you can see uh, it could present some of the ethical questions around uh, vaccination and science in a different way. And it, at the end, it kind of, uh, I'm... <laughs> You know, at the end, uh, it is determined that the way they're going to get the is vaccine... Is this where we say spoilers, that, to anyone who may or may not have finished it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this, this is the spoiler of them all. Um, the At the end of it, I mean, it's so ludicrous. They decide that the way they can get the vaccine is basically by killing Ellie. That's what the doctors want to do. Um, they we'll want talk on that in a bit. Maybe. They, okay. want, they want <laughs> to chop yeah, out yeah. Her, the bit of her brain that's infected. And at that point, you're just, you know, it's so far gone compared to um, what it you know the other direction it could have gone in and the reason for that is that uh, the long decade long process you're talking about to really get a vaccine just wouldn't work in this context. Doesn't lend itself it to doesn't lend itself to a snappy narrative. No. Yeah okay I mean you think maybe uh, the, the movie Contagion is a good one to think about I think that uh, did involve a lot of scientists and they did talk about that and they tried to keep that as close but still managed to make an entertaining Movie. I mean, it, you know, mm. and, and, and you're right. There, there's some of it which was, of course, well, that yeah. that would. There's and no that's way. always the balance, isn't it? Because these are creative industries at the end of the day. And, you know, who are we to restrict that creativity? And, you know, it is mm. for entertainment and for enjoyment. And it is a nice way to engage with, like, science and areas relating to diseases and vaccinations. But I think at the end of the day, it is a creative industry mm. and, you know, the, the, the final outcome for them is entertainment, really, is our entertainment. So, so as researchers then, uh, th maybe this, this half of the group who, who know about this stuff very well and uh, intimately kind of a, a knowledge of, of peer review processes and journals and stuff, I mean, wh wh what are your thoughts on that then? So uh, uh, what Richard's just said in terms of it's, it's not necessarily that important. I, I, I would say I think the thing that games could address very well is the ethical side of science rather mm. than the actual facts if you like you know games are never going to replace uh you know our traditional methods of learning the book the lab what they can do is present so let's say 
the ethical issue of using a human test subject rather than an animal. That's something where a game can put you in a position to make that decision. Um, and it might make you think about it, might make you think about it a little differently, and it's something that games are very effective at, and I can't see a way another medium could do that. Is that because, uh, I think the, uh, the cliche is, you have an emotional uh, attachment to this. You you are doing the whatever it is. You are saying yes or no to the, uh, mm. to, the to, to cutting the, the poor Yeah, but it's, it's also just putting you in a situation in a more concrete manner. I mean, it's all very well for us to talk about human test subjects in the abstract, but if you are playing a game with some sort of medical element to it and you end up in a situation where, let's say you're in charge of a colony, you want to make a vaccine, it's going to take, you know, 10 years. But if you, you know, if you license your medical staff to use human test subjects, maybe you can get it out in three mm. to five. Do you want to do that? And, you know, what are the consequences of that further down the line for your colony? That's the kind of, that's the kind of way that gaming and science could intersect too. I, I think the ethical side of science is uh, something games can handle very well. The actual nuts and bolts of it, I don't think you're going to end up with an entertaining experience mm. or necessarily an educational one. And, and does that upset you guys at all? I mean, you said it's, it's pure entertainment. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't play games to have a science lecture. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, do plenty enough. of that in my nine to five. So, you know, a lot of the time, you know, I play video games. Like, I played a lot of play games as well, which mm. I really mm. enjoy. And, you know, you, you do it as an enjoyment. If there's, like, a scientific basis, personally, I find that a fantastic bonus. But, you know, a lot of the time, you guess, you kind of think you don't really expect everyone to have the same interests as you and the same kind of interest in generally kind of, you know, science and vaccination and that kind of thing. So, you know, I think it's good if there is elements of that, you know, because it, it's just nice to, to kind of highlight it and kind of bring it, give it some kind of, um, you know, profile. So I think it's a really interesting area for especially like young people or, you know, who are interested in, in science. Um, but I think certainly it doesn't bother me at all. No, no I'm okay. happy to play my games. <laughs> yeah, I think when I look for maybe either from a computer game or from, or from kind of literature or films, it's, um, it's not a sense of scientific realism. It, maybe it's sort of a sense of sociological realism, if anything, a sense that, that, you, that you're experiencing something of how human beings you know, um, would deal with a particular situation. So, so the, so the um, scenario can be something completely out of this world. But so long as the, the people in it are recognisably human, or if it's a game that you're, you're, you're rec making recognisably human choices, that's maybe what what seems really important to, to drag you in and to make you think mm. about it and that and the it can be scientifically implausible around that so long as it, it feels real so this is the emotional aspect yeah. is the most yeah. important bit there yeah. okay what about yourself um yes i i understand it's games and creativity and and people don't expect it to be realistic i think it disturbs me where there's there's a, 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 a gross um well, you Mistake? rolled your eyes at the, uh, at the at the sports, for example. For example, no, that that doesn't. No, that's not. I, I rolled my eyes because I I know and that's okay, funny. Okay, I'm I'm I mean it's funny and it doesn't matter. I think it disturbs me if there's a, an an idea comes out um, uh, that is wrong that would make people believe a vaccine comes from the brain of somebody mm. or for because there's this anti-vaccine people saying you know vaccines are made from the brain of monkeys which is you, you know completely untrue and and anything that sort of supports these sort of I I ideas is a bit <laughs> So, so enforcing <laughs> this stereotype, I think what we maybe as scientists have to trouble with is the mad scientist. Is yes, the, you know, is the, with the crazy hair. And if the, and the scientist is shown as the yeah the you know d d doing the, the ugly thing or or or, or mo most of the time after a, a film like Contagion or, or, or whatever film with the pseudoscience, people come come and say, oh, so why don't you do that? Oh, that seems so <laughs> easy. <or> so <laughs> Okay. Yes, people who know a PCR in 15 minutes don't know <laughs> how long a PCR takes. Sorry, guys, that's a, a very inside joke, but trust me. That's mm -hmm. an overnighter, at least, isn't it, normally? <laughs> yeah. so, so for me, the scientific accuracy, yeah, if personally, it does disturb me a bit in movies, but, but, but because I, I think, yeah, maybe that's just my brain. And I, I think it's... I, I Absolutely agree with you. It depends on people. Some people it don't doesn't matter, and some so it matters. But when it, when if it gives really a, um, an idea that is really con con counter helping on on some important aspects like for example vaccination of course i'm attached to it then i start like thinking like you, mm. you say okay if they, they want a vaccine they have to take their brain and i say oh, no, not again not the brain yeah. thing for the vaccine yeah. I, so mean I, that's what I, 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 I agree yeah. completely with that i had no idea that that was an anti-vaxxer thing this thing about monkey brains and you know while while i would say games don't necessarily have a responsibility to get the science accurate i, s I certainly think wha if they're contributing to a myth like that which is yeah harmful in the real world, yeah. I, I don't imagine the developers would be very happy to find that coincidence out either. Um, so the, the bandwagon was being, or it was being attached to it for whatever reason. 
Yeah, well, I think I think they were just thinking of you know what what will be a great yeah. motivation for Joel in the final scene, which is you know I mean it's terrible, isn't it? I I hate the the last thing of them. You know they have to get Ellie's brain. I wouldn't have minded it if they said we just need to kill Ellie, you know. But it was the fact they focused on the brain, yeah, which okay. was just. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we want to. Ethically, the brain or killing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Probably the same. Well, it is that it, yeah. it actually does focus on on a fungal disease. I think we've talked about it before that these are very unknown diseases like i mean a virus is the easy one everyone knows you know you can think of um, dozens of si science fiction movies from the andromeda strain onwards that deal with kind of a new terrifying virus or whatever it is but i think fungal diseases are kind of i think the silent killer is the cliche but it's absolutely true i mean they, as you just said they affect millions of people there's there's very few drugs or treatments for them there's very you know no vaccines mm. at all i don't believe so in, in a way what i've taken out of it actually i'm quite pleased that that they've not highlighted because that's not the wrong way. They're not highlighting it. It, it is a fungal, but they've actually touched on something that that not many other people have. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of this uh, relatively unknown thing that only very very sick people tend to get. So I'm quite pleased about that. And I think you know to 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 counter your points, it it, it, it doesn't bother me too much at all. To be honest with you, it's not 100 percent accurate. Like it's you know I, I watch Star Trek for for fun. Like that's you know sometimes mm. it turns out that is accurate. You know, but. <laughs> That's not really, really why I'm watching it, is it? Yeah. It's, you know, we, we do it all of day. Course, yeah. We talk about it all day. It's nice mm. to, to switch the rain off. But I think uh, one thing we did talk about that 20 years and 10 years for the vaccine development, they use the 20 years as a, as a big point and saying it's still, it, has, it doesn't exist. Mm. You know, no cure exists. We're still doing this. Presumably that was a very important sort of mental choice for them to show that this is a devastating societal. Yeah, I mean, the, the 20 years thing is really about the character development. I mean, at the start, you see Joel at probably the worst moment in his life when he loses his daughter. I think the, the, there are two reasons the 20 years are really important. The first is that, you know, when you see him again, he's a kind of dead-eyed older man who clearly doesn't have much to live for. And the other one, which is much more important, really, is that Ellie is 14 and this is the world. You know, she doesn't have any memory of uh, the world we see at the start of the game. Uh, the, I mean, it's not post-pandemic society for her. It's just society. It's what she's grown up with. And uh, that's, that's used to enormously good effect throughout the game when Joel and Ellie are walking through in some of the quieter moments and they'll see stuff and she has no idea why mm. it's there. He's telling her why it was there. And, she, you know, you can see her trying to visualize this world we live in now. I mean, it's... The game was set in the year it was released, uh, and part of the effect it's going for is having a human being imagining our world removed from that world. Um, so the 20 years, again, it's not really a science thing. It's purely about the story they want to tell, which is about these two characters. Yeah. And but, it, but it does freeze frame 2013, for this is what 2013 would look like yeah. in 20 years' time, somebody who yeah, and just woken up into it almost. I mean, Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I, I think there's probably an aspect of, because you're going around shooting people uh, in the media itself, who didn't want that in 2013. Okay. <laughs>